Yeah. You've flown thousands of miles to be here today. You woke up super early for the keynotes. You're probably a little bleary-eyed. A little bit of coffee was helpful. Huh? You're driven. You're here to learn things. Your schedule is full. Azure Stack, IoT, Cognitive Services, Quantum Computing. What is that, anyway? Does, don't does know. It, does anyone know? We don't I, know. I don't know. No. But you've got this nagging feeling that you're missing something, something important. I have way too many customers, and I make way too much money, said no developer in the history of the universe. You are not alone. We've had the unique opportunity over the past two years to travel the, 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 the four corners of the earth, meeting insiders just like you. We've worked with a lot of startups. These startups, they're scrappy. They're trying to figure things out. One of the most important things that we've learned is that the technology is never the problem. They've nailed it. They've got Azure up and running. They've got bots. The Azure place. They have learned something way more important. Getting customers was their main problem, and those startups have solved it. So we would like to let you in on a little secret we call insidering. Are you guys ready for a secret? Yeah. No? Are you guys not ready for a secret? Well, if you're not ready for a secret, we can, yeah, we can, can walk away. We're just going to leave, yeah. We call it insidering. Get their device. Insidering is listening get device to ready. customers get it. Get it, get and it. building a product with them co-creating. You might know it through the Windows Insider program, but insidering the verb is a little different. What is insidering, you might ask? No one asked. You choose a human. First, you choose one single one. human. One person. Not a customer segment, not a group of people. One human being. What is that person's name? Where can you find them? Identify a real problem that that real person has a real problem that's important to them that they need to solve. Then you try to solve it. Your first try probably isn't going to work. It might work. You might get lucky. But how do you know if it works? You got to test it. And then you got to bring that prototype, that MVP, that minimum viable product, to that real human and get their feedback. And more important than asking them for their feedback, you actually have to fix the things that they tell you. And then once you get it working, you make that person into a hero. That is what we call insidering. So let's, feel, let's hear from a few Windows insiders that we've met all around the world. I get it. Oh. Yeah. All right. So instead of me telling their stories, let's let the heroes of the story tell you their stories. And uh, these three insiders who we brought with, with us today have had a very exciting day. So first, we snuck into the build keynote very, very early, snuck in. Everyone walked by us, Chris Capicella, Frank Shaw, Terry, Terry Wanda Ninja. And then they had a one-on-one -on -one with Satya 20 minutes ago. And he asked them a very interesting question. What are you trying to do? And every single one of them had a very crisp and clear answer. Here's what I'm trying to do, and here's why I'm here at build, to learn so I could do that thing better. And guess what happened then? Satya's like, I love this. Tell me what happens. Let's welcome up Anj to the stage first. With the device, with the device, Anj. All right. Anj, Anj, you're good, you're good. You've pitched to hundreds of startups. You got this. What is this that you have? Uh, thank you. This is a device of IV Drip Alert. Uh, it's a device which comes to save the life of patients and to reduce stress for nurses and uh, helping them for delivering fluid into patient body and monitoring fluid on uh, when it's jumped or when it's finished in the bag. It can give an alert by using Azure. Uh, the data will be uploaded on the platform and then it will be received on the receiver in the nurse's room. Thank you. So, Anj. This, you have a deeply personal story about why you've built this. Anj was not a software engineer. She was only 18 years old when she realized she needed to solve this problem. Tell us why. Uh, in my country, Rwanda, I'm coming from Rwanda, 
there is a uh, ovary infusion and an infusion uh, which happen to patient and lead leads patient to uh, several complications. So uh, after realizing this problem, uh, I, I realized it when I was with my brother. So uh, I came up with the idea of building this device. She saved his life, and she's going to go and save the lives of thousands of other people. Currently, currently her solution, yeah. Her solution is being tested in six Rwandan hospitals. Because you know what? You got to test with the human. So what would you say is your best advice to these lovely people who are looking to build relationships and get customers? Um, come again. Her main thing, and she does this very well when she's not staring at 1,000 people, <laughs> is she builds relationships with authenticity. She leads with her story, which is, I heard my brother screaming because a blood clot had formed in his IV, causing blood backflow. I had to save his life. I built this. She met her co-founders in a computer lab, building the prototype in the middle of the night. And the lab owner said, let me help you, because he was so moved by her. Solve their problem. Next up, Irving Amukasa, all the way from Kenya. Thank you, Anj. All right. What? Oh, sorry. Raymond, all the way from Ireland. This is me getting Raymond. real creative. She's like, no, this is Raymond Dillon, all the way from Ireland. Raymond, tell us about Proto. What are you trying to do? Um, Proto software was set up by myself and my brother. Um, we're from rural Ireland. Um, big issue with rural Ireland at the minute is um, everybody with their journey to the cloud and to use of artificial intelligence in local rural areas. Um, so we've seen a commonality on what people were looking for, whether it was um, a local childcare area or um, even your local corner shop. So what we tried to do is build products based on what everybody was looking for. Um, we've used Azure, we've used um, Zamp. Zamrin um, and various other different te technologies. Um, the interesting, funny story, if you don't mind. Yes, I, please tell us. Um, uh, out of all the things that um, we've been asked to do, one of the most interesting or slightly odd ones was um, we've a guy who was an owner of a gym. Went, I like to organize meal plans for my clients. I want a spreadsheet. That was all he wanted. It surprised us, but it was a learning process for us because we realized that what we thought people wanted wasn't necessarily what they were looking for. So everybody's journey is, is unique to, them, to, to themselves. So. Exactly. So tell us a little bit about how you are actually expanding and getting customers. How do you have legitimacy where you live? Um, where we live, um, they're trying to build up, um, particularly in the IT area um, and with software, their local en enterprise areas. So there's one not too far away from us. So once we set up, um, what we did then was went over to the enterprise area and went, look, um, we're here. If local clients, if there's anybody that's looking at websites, apps, IoT solutions, we're here, come talk, talk to us. And it's worked very, very well for us. Tell us your best advice for these lovely people. Um, best advice, as it says, is chase the co customers, not the, fun the funding. Um, that was a mistake I have seen made pre previously where businesses were just went straight for the fu funding and didn't really think about the co customers or what they're wanting to do. So it might be hard to, to start off with, um, but if you per persevere and keep, keep going, everything will be fine. Raymond is amazing because he is an incredible supporter of the Insider program. And there's not a week that goes by that he doesn't email me and say, Donna, what more can I be doing? What more can I be doing? He's volunteered to build us websites. He's volunteered to make us curriculum. He's volunteered to host a stop on the Insider Dev Tour. And he's volunteered to create all of the Windows and Azure integration, uh, all the um, concepts in the curriculum yep. for said Dev Tour. Thank you. No problem. All right, and now all the way from Kenya, we have Irving Amukasa, who's a local celebrity in Kenya, by the way. He was on uh, Africans' versions of Shark Tank called Lion's Den. 
And he owned that room so hard. Yeah, so hard. All right, tell us, how did this happen? Tell us what you do first. Tell us about Sophie. Sophie Bot. Uh, Sophie Bot is Cortana for sex. <laughs> Simply that, because where I'm from, it's awkward and hard to openly and honestly talk about sexual health. So we made up Sophie Bot, an AI persona that you can ask questions on sexual health That's and right. get credible answers to. Yes. Yes. So tell us about your bot history, because Satya is he's telling Satya this, okay? So you can imagine this conversation. <laughs> Satya's looking at him and says. How did you get into this field in the first place? <laughs> Go ahead, your oh. origin story. <laughs> so uh, I've been playing around with bots for a while since I was 15. Made Nerd. silly bots, a Bible bot. <laughs> made, <laughs> made silly bots, made a Bible bot, made a dictionary bot. But then one night, going over Facebook, I, I see a story of a girl called Sophie and about how her life gets messed up because she didn't know enough about sexual health. Because where I'm from, it's awkward and hard to talk about sex. You don't get the right information on sexual and reproductive health. And I was like, here's this technology I've been playing around with. Zero judgments. You can ask questions and get answers to. Ding, ding, eureka moment. Problem, solution. Solved. Sophie Bot was born. So tell us about how you actually went from three questions to how many do you have? <laughs> uh, th uh, we now support uh, 30,000 questions. A bot can answer 30,000 questions. But we started off with three answers. Uh, three questions. Hi, <laughs> does pulling out work? <laughs> does pulling out work and what is sexual health? And each time we got a new question, that's way how we updated Sophie Bot. Real time co creation. Re re Take your customers' <laughs> feedback and build and your product. Build it. So, uh, so now, what's your advice? Uh, okay. For these beautiful people. Uh, from three, ans three questions and answers to 30,000 questions and answers is test out every single thing. Right. Uh, test out every single thing really fast and validate that what you have from actual users. Right. Yes. That is awesome. Thank yeah. you, Irving. Thanks a lot. All right. So that's them. That's their story. They're going to be around to chat. So let's ask, let's ask about you. Every one of you have a career goal. If you didn't have one, you wouldn't be here. Think about your career goal. What is something that you have? You got it? Likely, at the heart of that career goal, there's a relationship that you need to build. Do you guys like my slides? Are they nerdy? Yeah. Say yes, please okay. say yes. Otherwise, we have to talk about them. Okay. She's going to make remake them if yeah. you don't like them. So at the heart of this career goal is probably a relationship you need to build. If you didn't need to build the relationship, you would already achieve the goal by now, right? If it was just you, myself, and I, you would have done it. You would have sat in that corner and just done it. But there's a relationship you need to build that you have not built yet for some reason. Who is it? Who is the human? It's Ferdy, right? It's Ferdy. You gotta know who it is, okay? If you don't know who it is, please take the next two days, figure out who that, that is. Just like building for a customer, what is their name? Where do they live? It's Ferdy. And most importantly, you gotta learn to hustle. What are okay? other words for hustle? You gotta learn to hustle. Work hard. <laughs> At the heart of every hustle, there's a fragile, emotional, Really, really moody, erratic, hungry creature. Now I'm thinking it's Jason. It might actually be Jason. Called a human. <laughs> called a human. We're fragile, emotional, sensitive beings. We're all sensitive snowflakes, every single one of us. Our moods and fancies differ from morning till night, happy hour or no happy hour. Dramatically different human you get. Speaking of happy you hour. You need to deeply understand the human that you're trying to hustle. And you need to understand two fundamental things for their currency. This is the currency of the human. What are their goals? If you don't know, you can hustle them. You can't go up to someone and be like, hey, you know, hey, Jeremiah, I need to make some money. Can I like give me some? That no. doesn't work. It turns no, you out. Can't. doesn't work. Yeah, doesn't work. You, you need to know what money. their goals are. And second, what words do they use? We love our own words. My God, do we love our words. We love our words and our names. Why do you think billionaires pay billions of dollars to have their name on the side of a building? That's why. Okay. What is the overlap of your goal and their goal in their words? We're gonna do we're gonna do an example so everyone understands. I'll we're be the hospital. My goals are to reduce costs by ten percent and prevent death. What good goals, hospital? You know what? I think I can help you. I'm Anj. 
I think I can help you because secretly I'm not telling him this. My goals are, you know, to prevent death of people like my brother, but also to make some cash, yo. Like, you got to pay the bills. But I'm not going to tell him that. What am I going to tell him? I'm going to use their words, all right? So how am I going to pitch this? First, remember, is your human risk averse or risk taking? Risk I'm, a, averse. I'm a hospital. I'm very risk averse. Okay, you're a hospital. Risk averse. Hospitals, financial institutions, banks, space travel, teachers, risk averse. Space travel? Whatever. <laughs> so lots of others are doing this. You I'm know that risk averse person who needs to know that 99.9% .9 of people have done it before they're going to do it? It's like that. Lots of others have done this. Data from the experiment shows those really blue people who need to see charts and graphs. I'd love your input on planning. People love to have a say in things. You know those people, you pull them in and suddenly it's a great idea if they weren't involved, shitty idea, like that. And then, your village elders will love it. Some people love authority. I'm they loving like, this. This is awesome. Some people really like... Tell me more about Sophie Bai. About. <laughs> <laughs> they love, love the, uh, uh, the approval of their village elders. But if they're the risk-taking kind, like say certain ninja cats... Like Fernie. <laughs> Then you have to go a different way. Risk-taking works for tech industry very well because they want to hear, no one else is doing this. It's impossible. It's impossible. It cannot this be done. This is a crazy, huge, life-changing idea. We won't have any other chances to do this than right now. And if they actually know you and trust you, you can say, I need you to trust me on this. People want to get the happy hour. <laughs> so how do you do it? Introduction. I know you have a goal of reducing costs by 10% this year. I do have this goal. Huh. I've created a prototype that automatically prototype. alerts nurses when your IV is full. With data. Your IV is empty. With data. Six Rwandan hospitals are using this. Ooh, other people are using it. Other people are using it. The pitch. I'd love to know if you are interested in testing this prototype in your hospital so you can reduce costs by 10% while preventing death. I'm listening. Tell me more. Quickly. <laughs> and that, my friends is how you turn good code into a great business. Ta da Webcast is coming up. Tune into that Wednesday. When is it? Fame. Wednesday. Wednesday. What else can we do if we're interested if in learning more? If you need help achieving your career goals, go sign up for our Devlings cohort, as we now call it, wow. Code to Biz. You're going to have these three. You're going to have us. You're going to have lots of p other people. AKA.MS MS Code, code to Biz. To biz. Go sign up for the cohort. Click on get, the link. Get your phones out. Take a picture of this page. I don't page. see people clicking on the link. Come on. Learn about the Insider program. Oops. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Insider.windows.com. Sorry, 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 sorry. It's sorry. important. Go there. This is me trying to use this. Come by our booth. Also, our booth's over there. I don't think anyone announced the Insider Dev Tour, and I don't think I'm supposed to, so I will. Oh, um, yeah. Insider Dev Tour. Insider Dev Tour. Tell is me more thing. about the shirt, you might ask. Tell me more about the shirt. We're uh, going on the road. AKA.MS. 20 Insider countries, Dev Tour, 18, 20 countries, 30 think, days. Whatever that says. 20 countries, 30 days. We're taking the best of the build content on the road. To Which go countries out there. are we going to? I am personally going to London, Moscow, Helsinki, Lund Tel Aviv. Those aren't countries, those are cities. And <laughs> Johannesburg. Okay. Yes. But there are 20 countries, 30 days. So if you live you in should a place, come too. you should come <laughs> and you should bring a code curious friend. You know, you have that friend who wants to learn to code but thinks it's too late, even though they're 18. You should bring that person. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come by the booth.